Hey everyone, so I've been using Soundpeats for about two years now and in today's video I want to talk to you about why I still like to use wide Bluetooth variations uh, over most true wireless uh, earphones and even though these are considered to be uh, a budget brand of earphone they still rival the sound, comfort and overall uh, ease of use uh, than many other uh, more expensive earphones. So today we're going to be talking about the Q35 HD by Soundpeats and these go on sale for as low as about $32 I've seen them so be sure to click the affiliate links down below and we're going to be going in depth today. So if you're picky with your audio, well, so am I. So I'm here to help. Let's get into another picky review. Starting with the physical features. Soundpeats have been updating the specific uh, model of earphone over the past two years. And the old model that I have from two years ago still works today and I've used those with multiple workouts over years and uh, in a few powerlifting competitions as well. Consisting mainly of hard plastics, uh, you've got your silicone, ear fin and ear tip and leading down you have a strong magnet there which will hold these together quite well, it's quite strong too. Uh, the cable is a little bit on the thinner side but I've had no issues with that and they do stick out a little bit um, when they are in your when they are in your ears but that's going to be leading into my um, next biggest pro which is the comfort of these. So these are marketed as workout earbuds. And for me personally, I find a lot of in-ear earbuds don't necessarily stay in my ear that well over time during a workout or whilst I'm running. Um, but for these, these fit perfectly. Um, they are like on the bigger side, they're a little bit heavy, but um, the biggest thing is that they bloody stay in my ears when I'm working out and I don't have to constantly um, adjust these. Uh, they're also a lot more comfortable than something like the Powerbeats Pro, which have the, the wing uh, design. But these just have the wing tip and they stay in really well. They're comfortable, I could wear them for hours. So the first test I do with any new earbud is the Spinner Rooney head test. So what you do is whack your earbuds in, you can spin your head 360 degrees, you're gonna flex your neck, stretch your neck as well. It's gonna move your jaw around a little bit and you'll be able to see if that kind of affects the seal. Um, and for this test here, uh, these work perfectly. When listening to music, um, sometimes with true wireless earbuds, I noticed if I lift my head up, the sound might change, you might lose a bit of bass, but here it stays really consistent. So it's a great test to mimic what you're gonna be doing with these earbuds. Like you might be lying down on your back, doing push-ups and going upside down. I don't know what you do with your training sessions. Uh, but these pass the test with flying colors. So with workouts, they work really well. Uh, say you're running, um, they stay in your ears perfectly. If you're moving your head side to side, they don't really come loose at all. Um, and there's not too much bouncing noise through the actual earbud. With the wire on, um, on your back, it can kind of create a little bit of a bouncing noise which can take away from the low end, but you can just clip that together or use the included um, clippy things, I don't know what they're called, but they'll help reduce that sound of the cable bouncing. Now the training and working out, uh, like I said, these work really well. Again, I've used these in multiple powerlifting competitions, which get pretty crazy. Like you whack them in, you get real sweaty, you're getting jade up. I just threw my earphones on the ground and then um, kind of found them at the end of the competition and they were still working fine. I still have that pair, which was the first one of these I got, which were the Q30 Plus uh, two years ago. And they're, they're still, the battery's kind of dying a little bit, but they work perfectly fine. Even for general use, they work really well. And I guess one of the biggest benefits of a wide Bluetooth variation, you can just kind of have it lying around your neck like I am right now. And say when I'm working out, I like to have like, I might have one in for a while. Then I feel like having both in before a big set and then I take one out and talking to someone. It's a little more convenient in that sense compared to a true wireless where you might have to have like both in. And then if you take one out, you have to whack it in your pocket or you might have to leave it on the ground somewhere and put it back in the case. You have to have the case around with you. You might be fidgeting with a touch control, say when you put it in your pocket. It's, it's getting picky here, but it's picky audio. Now some obvious pros of true wireless versus wired uh, is that say for example, you got it around your neck uh, with the wired Bluetooth variation. And sometimes like say if you're going for a run or over time, it might kind of slip over to one side and it kind of pulls the other earbud down. To combat that, I can kind of have it, like if you've got a tighter shirt, you can leave it in the shirt. And normally if you're running, let's say with one in, it's not really gonna go anywhere, but it really depends on the shirt you're wearing. Um, and with true wireless, you don't have that issue. You're free, it's true wireless. Also, uh, there's gonna be mono mode uh, as an option on true wireless. Uh, which is something you just can't really get with a wide Bluetooth option. And not all true wireless have the mono mode option, which basically means you can hear both uh, audio channels in the one earbud. Um, but yeah, this is something you can't get on a wide Bluetooth variation. With taking calls, I find that a wide Bluetooth variation is quite convenient. Uh, say you have one in your ear, and then uh, you can still hear your own voice through your other ear being free of the earbud. Whereas with true wireless, you might have to have both in. And I know on some models that it does allow you to hear your own voice when you're speaking. Um, but a lot of them that I've tested don't really have that. So again, to combat that, you have to take one out, you might have to hold it and you might be fidgeting with the microphone. And I had an occurrence once when I was on the phone with someone, 
I put the earbud in my pocket and the microphone was kind of going crazy, so not ideal. Now onto the IPX rating. So these bad boys have an IPX rating of eight. Uh, so they're considered waterproof on the website um, and you could submerge them in water. It really depends on the manufacturer, how long you can with an IPX eight rating. Um, but of course, like these are just marketed for workouts. So it will be good for any kind of training, sweat, splashes. Um, I wouldn't go swimming or deep diving in something like this. And the reason they're able to be IPX eight is due to the magnet uh, charging slot. Whereas in the previous models, it's had a micro USB little flap thing, which kind of got annoying and over time over my um, with my old pair, it kind of just like broke off and you couldn't put it back in. So um, that means you have to use a proprietary um, cable that is included um, and like the magnet is okay. It's kind of annoying if you like hit it with a cable, it might just kind of come off, but um, yeah, it works fine. And on the back of this, we have our control. So you can control everything here except for being able to fast forward or rewind. Not that many Bluetooth earphones can do that except the PowerBeats Pro. That's one earbud I've tried that can do it. So uh, one tap to play and pause, uh, double tap to activate your voice assistant, long hold on the plus to skip a song, long hold on the minus to uh, skip back a song, and then volume up and down there as well. Uh, to power on and off, you're just gonna hold the play button for about four seconds, which it takes a bit of time to turn on, which is where the previous models didn't really have that. They took about two seconds, um, but it's honestly not too bad. And this leads into one of my biggest pros of uh, uh, the wide Bluetooth variations, and it's the fact that you have those physical buttons, which I personally think you just can't beat in terms of accuracy. You're always gonna get 100% accuracy compared to touch controls, which has that slight um, human margin of error about where you're tapping. Um, and then when it comes to running and working out, this is gonna be a lot more easy to um, find those controls say, when you're running and everything's moving around. You just can't beat them. Now onto Bluetooth. So these have Bluetooth 5.0 and they're using SPC and Aptex. On the website, it doesn't state if they use AAC, but in my testing on my Mac, uh, it showed that it was using AAC. So I guess it uses AAC. Even if it didn't, the sound is still really good um, for the price that you're paying as well. And I would even compare these to something like the PowerBeats Pro. They need to be paying about one sixth of the price. There's also barely any latency with YouTube and Netflix. Uh, that was tested on an iPhone. There might be the slightest amount, but that's if you really have to look for it. Now onto Bluetooth range. So in my testing, I do one test, uh, which goes uh, over a course of 25 meters in my backyard. And these cover 95% of that. And the second test I do is over about 15 meters from uh, one end of the house to the other. And this is going through about four different walls. We're going upstairs as well and we're able to cover 95% uh, there as well. So really good. Sadly, there's no multi-pairing or auto pause, but again, you don't really expect that with something at this price range. One slight downside with uh, these earbuds is that there is some slight white noise when there's no music playing. Now you'll probably hear this, maybe if your volume's at 30%, any higher than that should be fine. Um, but if you are listening to podcasts and you might hear the, the slightest amount of white noise, it's not crazy. Uh, I find it's still quite fine, um, but it's definitely there. Now onto battery life. So these claim to have 14 hours of battery and I've owned these for about just a month and a half, about two months. And it's funny thing is I had to re-record this whole video because as I was recording my previous video, um, the battery started to drain a little bit faster than, uh, than faster than I felt was normal. So I ran through some tests and these only lasted for seven hours and 22 minutes at 50% volume. So I contacted Soundpeats and after some emails back and forth, um, their customer service is really good, which is why I always recommend products from uh, Soundpeats. Um, they were happy enough to send out another pair. So it's kind of strange, like I've, I haven't had the issue with my previous models, which is a Q30 Plus and the Q30 HD. Um, I ran that through a test to kind of compare and that lasted 16 hours and about 20 minutes um, at 50% volume. So slight gripe there, um, but definitely something to be aware of. And that leads into one of the biggest cons, I guess, of wired Bluetooth earphones in general is that you have to charge these more often. Whereas normally you might have a case that can charge your true wireless earbuds and that can range from like 20 to 100 hours. So you might be charging these a little bit more often. But what I like to do is, again, since I own so many pairs, this is when gyms used to be open and I used to have one pair in my bag and if one pair died, I would just grab the other one and charge the one that I um, had died. So you kind of have unlimited battery. And that's kind of because the indicator when the battery is low and then you probably only have about six minutes before they die. So if they made that a little bit earlier, like 20%, then you have a bit more time to charge them up. But that's all you get. And finally, uh, on the website, it states that these take two hours to charge to a full battery. I haven't tested it myself, um, and there's no indication of fast charging. Now onto the mic test. So these are using CVC noise canceling technology. Um, so you can be a judge of the next two tests here. All right, so here's the test with no noise in the background. Uh, there's some birds chirping in the background. I don't know if you can hear that, um, but I was doing this test the other day and it didn't work for some reason. So here I am now. All right, now let's go into some background noise. All right, and here's a test with some traffic noise in the background. 
Uh, that's just playing off my computer speakers. All right, now onto my favorite part and most important, and that's the sound quality. Now, starting with my own bias, I'm a bit of a bass head. Uh, I listen to a lot of metal, EDM, hard style, that kind of music. So that's where my bias kind of kicks in before we start here. Um, starting with uh, passive noise isolation, of course, it don't have any A and C, but the passive, uh, the passive noise isolation on here is really solid. So if you have your volume of about 50%, in combination with the passive noise isolation, you're gonna block out most uh, outside sounds. And with the volume at 50%, uh, that's pretty decent. You'll be at a nice, easy listening level. And when you crank these up to 60, 70%, you're cranking pretty hard. They go pretty, pretty solid. I wouldn't probably go any higher than that. If you want to though, these have plenty more room and they don't distort um, up in that higher end. Uh, unlike the previous model, the Q30, uh, the Q30 HD, which uh, had a bit of distortion and like, the highs got a bit harsh uh, around the 70%, 80% volume level. You'll also be happy to know that these go really quiet. So if anyone likes to listen to music uh, before bed at very low volumes, uh, these go very quiet, uh, whereas a lot of Bluetooth earphones don't really uh, have that option as well. Uh, keep in mind, they do have that slight white noise. So when, again, when listening to those lower volumes, below 30%, you'll kind of notice it. Uh, but for myself, I find it's kind of bearable. You kind of get used to it. Now onto the audio signature. First, I just want to start by saying for the price that you're paying for these, you're getting some absolutely incredible sound. Sound that comes close to something like the Powerbeats Pro and you're gonna be paying one sixth of the price. So starting with the bass, you're gonna get some really deep bass here. These are a bassier headphone, but the bass remains quite punchy and it doesn't really drown out the other uh, frequencies as well. I'll say these go a little bit deeper than the Powerbeats Pro, uh, but with something like the Powerbeats Pro, you can get a little bit more clarity in the highs and the mids. I would also compare these directly to something like the Soundbeats TrueShift 2, which is a new one uh, that recently came out from Soundbeats. And I'll say these sound a little bit clearer. Um, they won't have as much bass, but I find on the TrueShift 2 that the bass can kind of drown out the other frequencies and the highs and the mids aren't as, aren't as clear as uh, Q35s here. Also, stay tuned for review on the TrueShift 2 coming out very soon. Now, when it comes to workout earbuds, I find bass is the most important thing to have. If you don't have enough of it, it can kind of get drowned out when you are working out or when you're running. Say, for example, if you're running, uh, you're making impact on the ground and that's gonna create some low frequency sound that starts from the floor, leads into your ears and it can kind of drown out the bass a little bit. So uh, I've had that experience with many earphones. It was the AirPods Pro when I would train with those. It was enough bass to get that thump and kind of get you driving through your workout. You won't, we need a bit of bass for workout earphones. Now onto the mids and highs. Uh, as I mentioned before, sometimes with a heavy bass, I can kind of drown out the mids and highs. But with these, you're still getting really, really clear mids and very solid highs as well. Vocals come out really well with those mids. You're getting things like distorted guitars that are quite forward. The highs are very, um, very evident in the mix. Um, they're probably on the, on the more held back sides. They're not gonna be as clear and as uh, precise as something like the Sony 1000 XM3s, or again, the Powerbeats Pro, just a little bit above um, in terms of detail there. And again, we're comparing like a $30 pair of earphones to something that's 200 bucks and above. Uh, and it's a pretty rough comparison, but I find if you can compare something that's so expensive to something that's so cheap, and it still comes quite close, and it's a good comparison to make and shows you what uh, other brands are really doing out there. Now with the sound stage on these and sound imaging, these do a pretty good job. You're probably gonna feel like you're in a medium sized room. Uh, it's not gonna be as expansive as let's say the Sony 1000 XM3s. And I'll say the Powerbeats Pro, probably it's a little bit better sound stage. And in terms of sound imaging, being able to hear where instruments are coming in space, these also do a really good job. Now breaking down the sound overall, because it's one thing to talk about the lows and mids and the highs individually, but it's a matter of how do they all sound together. And again, for the price you're paying here, they sound really, really good. It's only when you compare them to the higher end models that you, you notice there's not as much detail and clarity and there might be a slightly kind of tinny sound with these, but it's only very subtle. And again, for the price you're paying, Soundpeaks has done a really, really good job here. And again, going off the previous models that I've owned, uh, the previous one behind this being the Q30 HD, they've also made just some small uh, improvements with that previous model as well, which I still have on sale. I think it's a little bit cheaper than these slightly less battery life. It's pretty much exactly the same though. Um, but they kind of just touched up the base. The base is a little bit cleaner. It's still, they're probably more base on the previous one, but it's just a little bit muddy and it kind of drowned out the other frequencies. And I found that on the Q30 HD, the highs also kind of got a little bit distorted on those high volumes as well, which is what they fixed up on these. So great job, Soundpeats, killing it. All right, so now let's talk about how these work with each uh, specific genre. It's gonna be on a scale of one to five. So I'll start with EDM. I'm gonna give these a four out of five. Again, that low end works really well and that's gonna be the biggest driver when it comes to EDM. Uh, with pop and radio music, again, 
not too much going on with that kind of music. So the vocals come out quite well. And again, you're gonna get a nice bass uh, coming through as well. Hip hop and R&B, again, a big driver in that sub bass and uh, just low end bass and hi hats as well as the vocals. So we give that a four out of five there, four out of five all around. With metal, probably one of the harder genres to sound decent on because you've got so many different instruments attacking uh, for center stage. Um, but these do quite well in keeping those double kicks pumping through well without drowning out the rest of the mids and the highs and the screams come through really well. So four out of five there. Okay, on to uh, rock. So I, I give this a 4.5 out of five. Again, kind of similar to metal, um, but it's a little bit less going on. Um, you're gonna feel that big kick in the, in the bass and the drums really well. So that's going to 4.5 out of five. Indian acoustic, four out of five here. Um, jazz four out of five, so it's just fours everywhere. Uh, and then we've got 3.5 out of five for classical. Again, instrument separation is really good. What could be better here is with that increased sound stage. All right, so now on to sub genres. So this is gonna be uh, more, I guess, niche kind of music you might not listen to, but if you do, hopefully it can help you out. So with hardstyle, I'm giving them a five out of five here. So hardstyle is gonna be a big bass driver, a lot of sub bass. There's not too much going on the mids and the highs, apart from some vocals and a lot of synths screeching around, but bass is the biggest driver there. And he's, just, he's absolutely killer. And that's why it's so good for working out as well. For trap and dubstep, you have more of that hi-hat being the driver along with the low, low end and the sub bass. So I'll give that a four out of five there. Now with Psytrance, I'm also gonna give these a four out of five. Um, with Psytrance, if you have a little bit of a better sound stage and sound imaging, that's where you get kind of that 3D psychedelic sound that you get with, uh, with Psytrance. Normal Trance, also gonna give it a four out of five with slightly better details in those highs, for those more crispy synths and crispy vocals. Would have given it a five out of five there. Um, again, that bass being the main driver there gives it a really nice solid score of four out of five. With techno, biggest drivers there again, it's gonna be that hi-hat, that really, really deep bass, and there's some vocals that come out as well. And it does a great job here. Finally, symphonic metal. So this is, I'll say this is the ultimate kind of test of an earphone. So if you can sound good with metal, and then you gotta add pretty much like orchestration to there, um, that's gonna make it really challenging for all these different types of in instruments to uh, battle for some center stage. So I'll give these a four out of five for that. Um, again, just with a little bit of better sound imaging and more clarity in those highs, um, that would give that a little bit of a higher score. But overall, they're really solid here for the price you're paying. Now to wrap it all up, again, for the price you're paying here, these are an absolute steal. And these are still one of my main earphones that I use for working out and even just general use. Due to that convenience of the wire here, the IPX rating, uh, a fit that is better than any earbud that I've ever tried, and I could wear them for hours on end. Keeping in mind, you still have those few cons of the fact that they are a wire Bluetooth variation, if you find that quite annoying. Um, there is that slight white noise, and then no multi-pairing, that kind of stuff that you get for those budget kind of brands. Even in the future, if Soundpeats were able to come out with their own app to be able to EQ, um, I feel like they might eventually do this. That'll just bump up their game. If it becomes more expensive, I would still definitely uh, go for a pair of earphones like this. All right, so that wraps up today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you resonated with my style of review, then uh, please leave a like, comment, uh, anything you want me to review, and of course, subscribe. Um, I'm just getting started out here, so uh, stay tuned for more videos coming out soon. And in the meantime, stay picky with your audio, because life's too short for crappy sound. See you in the next one.